Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about the episode from Season 7, Founders Day. It was the closing episode of Season 7. If you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe. Founders Day was written by Kathleen Haidt, who wrote 24 episodes of The Waltons and also 32 episodes of Gunsmoke amongst a very extensive writing career. It was directed by Ralph Waite. One of the things about this uh, particular episode that I've been asked a lot is about the music, Appalachian Portraits, that is performed by Jason as his final composition for his time at Kleinberg Conservatory of Music. Uh, and people have asked me who actually composed that. I have done as much digging around as I can and have not been able to get a specific uh, composer, which leads me to feel that it was composed by Alexander Courage, who was our composer for the Waltons for a number of years and, and did all of that music for many of those episodes. So in lieu of seeing another name on there, I'm going to go with Alexander Courage. Um, people have asked me a lot about the music on the Waltons. There was not ever a soundtrack that was available for people to purchase for music of the Waltons, but there certainly was some beautiful music over the years. Uh, Jerry Goldsmith uh, composed our theme music, which has become quite iconic and I think is known by people all over the world. So we did have a fabulous music team as part of the Waltons. Actor Dean Jagger played Professor Bowen, Jason's professor at Kleinberg. And I was very excited to have him as a guest star because I remembered him from the Christmas classic White Christmas, which I watch every year at Christmas. My probably one of my top three favorite Christmas movies. So I was very excited to meet him and work with him. And we had also had, uh, over the nine seasons, uh, another member of the cast of White Christmas, Mary Wicks, who played the housekeeper in White Christmas, did an episode as a cousin of the Baldwin sisters, cousin Octavia. So fun to have two of them as guests on the show. Throughout the episode, Jason is struggling to figure out what his composition is going to be. His professor has very uh, traditional ideas about what these compositions should be, but members of the family keep in interrupting Jason and also putting their two cents in. Grandma says, no, she doesn't like the title. Elizabeth asks what it means. He finally, uh, Ben and Cindy are interrupting him. So he goes over to the Baldwins to see if he can practice there. And they think, oh, they're gonna sit down and listen to a concert. And they keep thinking that uh, that they're going to get a private concert. And, and, and Miss Emily keeps saying, I like it better when he keeps playing because he stops, he keeps stopping to write. I did notice when the shot with the Baldwins was being constructed, when you see the wider shot, you see air, like room between their two shoulders. When you come into the two shot, the tighter shot, you can see their shoulders are kind of overlapped. This was a common thing that was done when we were shooting, uh, you know, tighter shots like that is so that the frame didn't have a lot of excess room in the middle. They would ask actors to tighten up so that the shot could be tightened and the focus was more on the people than the excess air around them. The Baldwin sisters want to preserve their family heritage and so an idea is formed to have this Founders Day that will celebrate all of the people who originally settled on the mountain. Along the way, the Baldwins find in their papers something that leads them to believe that a relative of theirs was the first to settle on the mountain, so perhaps it should have been called Baldwin's Mountain rather than Walton's Mountain. And then Cora Beth is going through things of Ike's ancestry. She comes across something that says a relative of Ike's uh, was perhaps the first person to settle on the mountain, and it should be called Godsey's Mountain. All of this gets resolved when grandma finds uh, a relative of ours, Rome Walton, his diary, which refers to when he first settled on the mountain and then later, with like a year or two later, meeting the Baldwin's relative and then later on meeting the other one. So she puts an end to the question of who came first. Uh, she doesn't want to share the diary because it makes reference to Rome Walton drinking and of course grandma is very very down on that concept so she didn't want anyone knowing that that relative 
that Walton relative drank. Sometimes happy ad-libs and, and precious moments are captured that make it to the final cut, that are just spontaneous, like this moment when I'm I'm feeding John Curtis and Jason's playing the piano and, and you get this adorable little spontaneous ad-lib from the our John Curtis, you know, enjoying a moment there. And it's just so sweet that I'm so glad that they kept it. When we were all on the front porch, uh, when Grandma goes to get Rome Walton's diary, uh, I know I've talked sometimes about which times was the front porch used uh, as the interior set when we were on stage 26, which this would have been because you can see through those windows into the living room. Other times uh, it was shot on the back lot when you can't see through those windows. And there was a point where I was talking about through the front door what you see. And in this case, you clearly, as grandma goes in and out, you see through to the stairs that lead upstairs in the house. Whereas in the episode, The Statue, when Grandpa is out there and Grandma comes to the door, rather than seeing those stairs, you see this table and lamp, which is what told me that that scene was shot on the back lot front porch. Our longtime production assistant, John Dayton, has often shared information with me and with all of you about behind the scenes of the Waltons. In this case, he got uh, a cameo on screen as a music student uh, that is taking a lesson from the professor. And I asked him, since you see his back, but you don't really see his hands playing if he did indeed play piano. And he said, although he did, uh, he had asked for the music and had hoped to have playback. And they said that was gonna not be in the budget. So they wanted him to actually play but he said the music was a little tougher than what he felt ready to play live there. So he basically had to sort of fake it as best he could. And later on, they did put playback in in post-production. But uh, a lovely on-screen moment. And because he had a couple lines, you actually see him credited here as an actor for this episode. Love this sequence that Ralph created as we begin the Founders Day celebrations. A beautiful use of movement to bring the camera around to the different things. Initially, you see the men gathered around a table and one of the gentlemen shows that he has a flask of, I'm sure, recipe or something. So that takes, as they move, that takes the camera over towards a sawmill. Then you see a woman carrying a musical instrument and that brings the camera back over past the barn where you see a woman with two, uh, a, a, a young man and woman being clearly pulled from the barn with hay in their in their clothing, uh, cute moment. And then and then the camera is drawn once again by a man playing violin over to the larger area of the front yard where you see the larger gathering for the Founders Day celebration. So just a, a lovely created shot that Ralph crafted there. When we get into the front yard for the Founders Day, there was something that caught my attention that I also confirmed with John Dayton. You see Corbeth go up to the porch to make an announcement, and then it cuts to a smaller, tighter shot of a group of people by the punch bowl. When I saw that, I went, that looks different to me. I think that was done not on the back lot because that looks like a backdrop and that looks, the lighting looked different enough to me. So I went, I think that was done on the soundstage. Then it goes back to Corbeth and Jason. And then it goes back to her asking the people to take a seat. And in this case, again, a tighter shot of that group of people that again is, was done on the soundstage for some reason, whether they had trouble with, uh, some footage got damaged or they ran out of time or something happened that they had to reshoot this and they just got a smaller group of people and picked up that at some point when we were on the sound stage. But then you see a wider shot when the professor comes in and that is clearly once again on the back lot. So some of those things that catch my eye because you know, I sort of knew what these things really looked like. Of course, it ends with the professor arriving and listening to Jason's composition and really liking it. And it is a beautiful piece of music. And I thought it was a just lovely tribute at the end that Earl narrates talking about where he grew up and the mountain and the area and families and goes through and talks about each of the members of his family. Uh, and it very well could have been the final episode of the series. And perhaps they did this thinking that if the show was not picked up, it would be a lovely final episode. 
and then we were fortunate enough to get to do two more two more seasons so there you have it that's what i have for you for this segment of behind the scenes of the waltons about the episode the founders day i'll be back with more behind the scenes of the waltons and more ask judy thanks for watching